Hi. I thought I'd start this lesson with uh, an image of a range of mountains called the Bedson Ridge in Jasper National Park. This is part of the uh, Rocky Mountains of Canada. What can you see in the rocks here? What structures uh, are hinted at uh, in the side of this mountain? What do we see as geologists? What I want to do in this lesson is be able to unpick the geology that we can see in this photograph. Now for this, uh, we're going to be working on page 12 of your theme 13 booklets. Uh, and you'll need uh, maybe some highlighter pens uh, to help you with it. Okay, I want to start by thinking a little bit about what we actually mean by these folds, to review um, what folds are and how they form. Let me show you a little demonstration. If we use a geology textbook as a model for a bed, we can see how folding uh, can occur. So if we compress the bed, we can have an upfold as the bed bends to form an antiform, or we can have a downfold or a synform if the bed bends downwards. If we have more compression, we can start to see uh, an asymmetrical fold forming. Antiforms and synforms can form together. So we'll see a pattern of an antiform next to a synform with another antiform after it. We can't have two antiforms together without a synform in between. Notice how the, the limb in the middle of these folds is shared between an antiform and also a synform. Okay. So we saw in that demonstration the difference between um, upright folds and inclined folds. When we look at the axis of these folds, um, they can be tilted. It's often um, linked to the idea of asymmetric folds, where one limb of a fold is longer than the other limb. Where that's the case, we have asymmetry. Now, where we get more and more compression, this will continue to develop. So the more these rocks are, uh, are compressed together, the more they're, they're shortened, the more they're going to, to wrinkle up. And what we see as a result is a feature called an overfold. If you like, this is where the fold almost falls over on itself. This cartoon that you have halfway down page 12 shows the different stages of what's happening. Can you label this um, cartoon up to show actually what's happening? Let me try and demonstrate it. We've already seen that compression of ductile beds makes folds. However, if we get lots of compression, we can go from a fold being upright to being inclined or to be overturned, where one limb of the fold, in this case, the bottom limb, is upside down. 
So the back of the book is higher than the front of the book. And the other limb on top here has a limb that's the right way up, with the top of the book being above the bottom of the book. This is what we call an overfold. Okay then. So we've seen how these folds form where we get compression of ductile rocks. What I'd like you to do now is have a go at question seven at the bottom of page 12. To do this, you need to be able to mark with a highlighter pen perhaps or a, uh, something that, that stands out a little bit where the axis of each of the folds that you can identify in this cliff is actually located. Remember the axis is a line that joins together hinge points in different beds. Once we've done that, well, let me, let me show you an example. So we can see that there's a, a pretty obvious hinge point there. Okay, so I've joined together the um, hinge points on different beds uh, with a line that forms the axis of that fold. What I'd then like you to do is I'd like to label each of these folds up, identify what type of folds we're talking about. Okay, let me show you how uh, I did this one. So I've put like a little bracket where this fold is, and this is actually an overfold. Think about why that is. Why have I identified that particular fold as an overfold? I want you to label up um, the folds you can see there, whether they're antiforms, sinforms, or overfolds. Perhaps as well you could even give a reason why. Okay. Press pause now, see what you come up with. This is our cliff face, where we've got some distinctive folded rocks. Let's put some axes on here. So we've clearly got a fold axis uh, here. It's an upfold, so that's an antifold. We have another axis there, a downfold this time. So it's going to be a sinful. The next fold axis we can see in here, you can see these folds are, are asymmetrical. Uh, they have limbs of different lengths. This one then, it depends what you think the limb on the right hand side is. You may think it's vertical or you may uh, interpret it as slightly overturned. So it's either an antiform or an overfold. Either, to be honest, is a, an acceptable answer. We've got another clear um, axis there. This one is a, a sin form or an overfold. Again, depending on what you think that limits. And finally, over in the corner there, we have another. Uh, fold axis, and that one again is a sin form or an overfold. So we're getting antiform followed by sin form, followed by antiform, followed by sin form, and so on. The one I um, uh, gave you as an example, we would describe that perhaps as an antiform or an overfold. Okay. Let's go back to where we started out this um, video. Looking at these rocks uh, on a larger scale here uh, in Canada. Now, when I look at this as a geologist, I can start to pick out some of the beds and some of the structures. Let me highlight some of these to you here.
If I just pick out a few, we can see that these beds are folded. If I draw in the axis uh, of this fold, we can see that we now have uh, two limbs here, one of which is the right way up, and the one at the bottom there is actually overturned. So what we're looking at here, and it's perhaps no big surprise, seeing as we're looking at um, uh, some large mountains, uh, are folded rocks. And these particular folded rocks, because it's the Rocky Mountains, these are, uh, there's a lot of folding going on here, these uh, rocks are actually forming a large overfold. So, as we watch the sunset on the Bedson Ridge uh, in Jasper National Park, we can see from this that by looking more carefully at the uh, attitude of the, the beds, which way they're dipping, whether they're the right way up or overturned, we can work out what type of fold we're actually looking at. What we need to do next time is take that on a step and to think about the ages of uh, the beds that are actually in a fold and what that tells us about uh, these folds and how to identify them. Anyway, that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.